So hello everyone. Welcome to the series named Conversation with Kushal once again. Today we have a special guest amongst us who's doing an MBA from one of the top schools across the globe that is Wharton Business School. So her name is Gayatri Gururajan. So Gayatri is a second year MBA student at the Wharton School. She's a chartered accountant by qualification and earned her BCom from Christ University in Bangalore. She undertook her CA articleship at KPMG in Bangalore in the M&A tax and assurance departments. After qualifying, she joined ITC Limited through ICI campus placements, where she worked for around three years before pursuing her MBA. Outside of work, she enjoys singing, yoga, travel, and the great outdoors. For those of you who don't know the ranking of Wharton, so as per QS rankings 2020, Wharton is ranked as number one school across the globe. And as an icing on the cake, Gayatri also had offers from all the top B schools, that is Kellogg, Booth, Tuck, and Ross. So thank you so much, Gayatri, for accepting my invitation. It's really an honor for me to interact with a person like you. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me here. I think your initiative is fantastic. You're looking to positively influence so many young uh, students. So congrats on that. And I am equally humbled and honored to be here. Thank you so much. So Gayatri, you know, let's uh, discuss your entire CA journey first. Then we would just jump down to your ITC limited experience. Then let's move on to your MBA plans. Why did you opt it for MBA? And then finally, we would just briefly discuss about your post-MBA plans. This would be the flow of our session. Sounds good? Sounds fantastic. All right. Let's begin then. So, Gayatri, could you just brief us about your CA journey? How was it? How did it go? For sure. So, um, just like a lot of other students, I took the CPT after grade 12 and IPCC soon after. I opted to self-study for all three levels of the CA because I figured oh, that was wow. the best for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I cleared and joined KPMG for articleship and mm -hmm. at KPMG I spent a year in M&A tax and then had the unique opportunity to switch departments to assurance for two years. I served a couple of uh, large listed clients. I okay. cleared my final exams with a few months of articleship left to spare. Um, I really enjoyed my experience at KPMG, uh, learning about companies through a financial lens. I had great partners, managers, and team members, but I wanted to learn more about how businesses operate on the ground and felt that industry exposure could be valuable. So a few of my colleagues encouraged me to attend the ICAI campus placements, and I decided to interview with one company, mm -hmm. ITC, and managed to get selected and joined. Okay, that's awesome. So when did you clear your CA finals? Which attempt? I cleared in November 2015, so okay. I am old. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so then you applied uh, in ITC Limited and you got into ITC Limited. So let's discuss yep. your work profile. So how was your work profile in ITC Limited and how was your overall experience there for three years? Sure. So I, I can give you like an overall. So I spent around three years at ITC and mm -hmm. at ITC, newly qualified CAs are either posted to business divisions as part of finance teams or they're mm -hmm. inducted into a corporate pool of CAs who perform project based assignments for different business divisions and subsidiary mm -hmm. companies. So I was a part of the second group okay. and we studied businesses and financial processes and controls and highlighted mm -hmm. different risks and their impact and provided our record recommendations in the form of reports uh, through final meetings with senior management of different business divisions. It was a very travel intensive role. I lived in okay. 12 to 13 different locations, okay. even in rural areas that I hadn't even heard of before for more than a year. Um, overall, it was a great experience. Where else can a young CA get the chance to explore all kinds of businesses, right? From food products to personal care to agribusiness, tobacco, hospitality, technology. I learned a lot from managers and business leaders across the entire company. And I felt that this experience was very valuable for me, not only from a career a point of view, but also in building me as a person. Awesome, awesome. Sounds very, very interesting. So, like, your experience has been more or less a very amazing one at ITC Limited. After that, then you decided that you will go for an MBA abroad. So, yeah. let me ask you this question. This is a very common question and almost all the students ask, what value does an MBA add over a CA? Sure, that's a very good question. So, I'm going to give you a consultant reply and say it, it really hmm. depends, right? It depends hmm. on your personal goals and what you really mm. want to do. If, if you want to be the best 
auditor in the world if you want mm. to be the best tax specialist in the world then mm. i don't see why you need to do an mba a chartered accountancy degree is more than enough for you to be the best in your field okay but if your goal is to do something a little different uh, to to broaden your um, world you a little bit then an mba can be a great stepping stone definitely mm. not mandatory so i can probably share Uh, my thought process and why i did the mba to give you a little more color so sure. during my time at itc while talking to and learning from people across the value chain right from folks at the plant to external vendors business process owners and mm. leaders i realized that while i enjoyed being like a finance business partner of sorts i wanted to learn more about how business decisions are made how mm. companies strategize and stay competitive in today's cutthroat ecosystem so i felt that a good way to learn more about business and strategy and add to my existing finance and accounting base would be to get an mba it was mm. a very organic decision for me that i didn't really plan for many years in advance or anything Mm-hmm. um but from my personal experience at wharton i can tell you that my world view has definitely broadened as a result of the mba i'm learning a lot every day whether it's okay. about the venture ecosystem in the us or business analytics or the latest innovations in business or finance or across industries so mm-hmm. i guess to bring it all together ca gives you a great depth of technical knowledge that you can apply in certain areas right. but i think that an mba can give you access to many more opportunities and roles that you might otherwise probably be precluded from so that's my spiel on why mba right get it get it so it's absolutely uh, valid and a very sound logical reasoning also like doing for an mba after a ca so you applied in foreign mba schools so what is the difference in applying in a foreign mba school versus an indian mba you know so what are the factors you considered whether to pursue an mba abroad or just to pursue an mba from iim ahmedabad or bangalore for sure so i was actually pretty clear from the start that i wanted an mba from one of the best institutions overseas okay and the institutions in india are amazing but this was really personal for me and okay. i had two main reasons so i guess my first reason So at KPMG and ITC I had the chance to work with renowned clients different business divisions and got to see business in India right across India so I wanted to gain a better sense of how things worked in this so called developed world and mm-hmm. what better way to do that than to completely immerse yourself in a two year MBA program and beyond so I wanted yeah. that kind of international exposure that's number one and okay. my second reason is that is really the students that attend the programs so in india most candidates are on the younger side um mm. and and this could be a changing trend correct me if i'm wrong but in other countries people gain significant experience in their respective fields before attending the program so they're able right. to bring a wealth of experience and mm. contribute to their peers learning and development and i think that this kind of learning and the connections you make in the process are really irreplaceable and i think those are the two main reasons why i was so dead set on uh, an overseas mba okay all right so yeah uh, basically even i agree with the view that uh, you should have a certain amount of work experience and then going for an mba makes sense rather than just going for an mba immediately after your ca uh, you went to for an mba so because of this pandemic also it has been impacted so has the pandemic impacted the dynamics of for an mba definitely definitely so i think we can divide my answer into two parts really mm. there's the positive effect if so mm. of a pandemic and there's a more negative effect the negative yes. effect is far more easy to perceive right i mean you can't really replace meeting professors meeting people there's no replacement for that kind of personal bond and that classroom experience but having said that i think a lot of positives have emerged number 1 schools are extremely precautious in make sh- making sure that their programs are still the high quality that they mm. have to be um and with that also comes uh, recruiting right now right. you can interview with different companies from the comfort of your own homes and i think the third thing is really access to people speakers companies so before maybe 
clubs or career services would be more reluctant to bring in speakers or companies from the, a different part of the globe, say APAC or Africa, just because of the logistics. Mm. But now, because everybody is stuck with Zoom, it just makes yeah. it so much easier to connect with anybody you want across the globe. So a lot of clubs have been pulling in fantastic speakers, leaders from different domains across the world. So I think this has actually enhanced the MBA experience. Okay. Yeah, that's very positive to hear it from your end as well. For those of you who just want to get into Wharton, just take an example that as a person who wants to get into Wharton after two to three years. So what would you advise him as to like, what are some of the steps he should do right now so that even he's able to get into Wharton after a couple of years? Yeah, that's a very good question. So that's also a tricky question because there's not one perfect path. Like I right. mentioned, my decision was really organic. I didn't really plan too much in advance. But having said that, I have a few general guidelines. Um, three. Number one, make sure you excel in your current job or entrepreneurial endeavor, whatever it may be. Hmm. Make memories, achieve the best you can, create impact in your organization that you can demonstrate. It doesn't matter if you're working in a company like uh, Aditya Birla or a, a big four or really, really any company really, or okay. if you have your own business or your own firm, make sure that you create an impact that you can demonstrate and be sincere. That's number one. Um, right. Number two is find something that energizes you outside of work. Show schools that you're multifaceted. This could be anything really. This could be social impact, um, mm. philanthropy, a hobby, or even exploring your adventurous side. Um, just find that something and show that you're a colorful person and you're not just like a one trick pony. And right. third is know why you want an MBA and have some kind of an idea of how it lent your personal journey and career. It's a really big investment of time as well as money. And while right. you might not be 100% certain of your career path after the degree, after the degree it's mm. important to go in with some kind of a plan and be flexible if things don't go your way. So I think these three are my guiding factors. Uh, excel at your current job, find something outside of work and know why you want to do it. Fantastic. Absolutely. Completely agree with that. So let's uh, talk about yourself also, like since you were offered from almost all the top B schools. So according to you, what made you stand apart from the rest of the crowd? Like, did you do something additional in your career or any other social activity that impacted your profile apart from other candidates? Yeah, um, so I think the admissions committees would be better people to ask, but uh, in my personal opinion, I think that I have a pretty solid profile overall. I've got all the basics, like good academics, work experience, mm. demonstrating leadership, passions outside of academics. But again, um, I want to underline the fact that I knew why I wanted the MBA and what I wanted to get out of it. So I'm mm. sure that that came through in, in my communication, whether in my essays or in my interviews. Um, so I'm happy to help others who have more specific questions, but I, I don't think I can speak to what made me stand apart, really. Yeah, but yeah, that's all right. So I was just asking about the any social activity, volunteering in any other activity that helped you in order to, you know, demonstrate some of the capabilities. Well, I have significant leadership experience um, outside of work as well um, okay. in social impact, as well as I have some hobbies that I've sustained for many years. For example, I'm a trained uh, Carnatic vocal singer. Oh, um, okay. I studied for 10 to 15 years. I really enjoy music. So it's just these small things, right? Yeah, that you it. really, right? That you demonstrate that you have and you have these passions and you're able to keep them going despite your hectic academics or work schedule, right. et cetera. Show that Absolutely. you're a person, like a real person, be yourself. Absolutely. Get it completely. So then you gave your GMAT, you prepared for your GMAT and you also got a very good score of 750, right? 750 on 800. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you prepare for your GMAT if you just were to guide the students? For sure. So a lot of people score more than that. But yes, I do consider 750 <laughs> a pretty good score. So um, I had a, like I mentioned before, I had a very, very travel intensive job. I lived out of a suitcase. So it was definitely a challenge that I had to plan around smartly. So the first time I took the GMAT, I was actually staffed on a project in a rural location in coastal Andhra Pradesh, oh, and internet okay. and network were horrible. 
so i resorted to studying from books and i really underestimated the importance of like live practice tests hmm. i got a score that i wasn't very proud of so hmm. i decided to wait till that project was over and take the gmat again um the next time i was luckily staffed on a project in a city hmm. and i would work till past midnight every day so i tried to take out at least 1 hour every morning uh, at around 6 6:30 a.m. before work to study and i did this for a few weeks and of course spent my sunday studying as well i, I didn't have much of a life um and finally i managed to get a score that i felt better represented my abilities absolutely yeah it's so after your gmat then you would have like uh, prepared for your essays sops then letter of recommendations so since even letter of recommendations are an important part you know like we cs we should approach which kind of people so whom should we approach so that our letter of recommendations would be good enough to get us into one of the top b schools you could share your example for sure so you're absolutely right letters of recommendation are definitely a critical component of your application um i wouldn't say that the principles differ uh, significantly between ca applicants and non ca applicants mm. but as a guiding principle it's good to pick someone from your organization mm. with whom you've worked with, with closely so okay. they know you they know your strengths as well as your areas for development and can provide mm. a really honest assessment and this is mm. more important than seniority or any other factor so in my personal case um i had two recommenders one mm. from kpmg and one from itc um mm. at kpmg i approached one of my directors who is now a partner in the assurance practice he was very kind to recommend me to all the schools i applied to okay. and from itc i also got help from a pretty senior executive who had seen my work in a few critical engagements so he mm. knew me he knew my work ethic and he was able to not only tell me what my strengths were but was really honest about where i lacked and that's important mm. to schools a realistic point of view so he was very gracious and he accepted my request for help so to any other applicant who is a ca who is looking to apply definitely mm. look for uh, people you've worked with closely doesn't have to be the most senior person in the company but people that know you uh, right. from your professional experience yeah so it's just a myth that if we get lor from some senior people then you would get into business school that's just a myth right that's okay. a myth yeah thanks Definitely. thanks for clarifying this as well so what is the average work experience at wotton uh, which is required hmm. like if you are mba candidate okay so that's also another good question so in a lot of the business schools in the us or overseas you would find that the average class age is a little higher than in india and okay. this is because people come in with many more years of experience so right. i would say the range is pretty wide from 3 to maybe 7 or even 10 years okay. so uh, you will meet classmates who are on the younger side as well as those who bring in a lot of experience and have achieved a lot at the middle management or even a higher level in their in whatever domain they might be i have classmates who are even army veterans who've served mm -hmm. for 7 to 10 years and who are learning yeah. with me so it's an incredible honor and privilege to study as well as collaborate with with all kinds of people people who Absolutely. are young and who are extremely sharp as well as people who are just so accomplished absolutely so does our article ship experience even that gets uh, counted in the overall work experience or that excluded that's very ambiguous Mm. <laughs> because um colleges don't necessarily have uh the clearest guidelines up front this is something that you okay. can discuss with uh, admissions committees mm. but um i find that article ship is in fact training even if you worked at kpmg like me on mm. on client engagements where you essentially worked like a full time employee mm. with all your blood sweat and tears <laughs> at the end of the day <laughs> it is technically um experience earned towards uh, getting your charter right, right. so uh, that's one kind of an experience i really do think that working at another company um, or even in the same organization really whatever you did your article ship for a few years after that uh, mm. in a more senior leadership role where you can mm. show that you led people teams projects i think that is more valuable when you apply for an mba okay get it completely and whether it is mandatory that we should have uh, 12 plus 
four in order to get into these top B schools, or even twelve plus three would do. Yeah. So, um, uh, most Indian uh, degrees in commerce or the arts or pure sciences are three years, right? Yeah, Whereas right. engineering degrees, etc., are four years. Right. And the thing is, uh, this also is a phenomenon in many other countries, and schools know this. So okay. uh, in most cases uh, you can clarify with the admissions committees of the respective school, or it's even written very clearly in the website. The bachelor's degrees for three years are definitely acceptable, but it's okay. always good to be on the safer side and clarify before you right. go ahead and apply. Right, absolutely, get it. So we've discussed almost all your pre-MBA uh, preparations. Now let's discuss your MBA experience at the Wharton Business School. So what sets Wharton apart from other institutes in terms of academics as well as non-academics? You can also state your overall experience. For sure. So I'm going to compare Wharton with other US B schools just because that was the cohort that I compared it with when I made my decision. Right. And I think that a few things set Wharton apart. And the first is really truly a collaborative and team-based culture. So in my first year, we had learning teams and mm. my learning team had people from a variety of different fields. So there was this one girl who was a private equity professional. Mm. Uh, there was another um, person who was uh, an ex-management consultant and another person who was an army veteran. And then there was myself, a chartered accountant. So these learning teams have very people with very diverse backgrounds put together different nationalities. So I think that they make a very conscious effort to put you in that sort of team-based, diverse, collaborative learning environment at the very beginning. And this continues throughout the course. So mm. in almost all my courses, I have a, a team component to it. So it, it's a great way to meet new people and to strengthen existing ties. So that's definitely number one. Um, number two, I think, is an extension from number one. And I don't know if it's unique to Wharton, but I, I found it very powerful. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong culture of helping each other out, whether it's recruiting or pulling your contacts to invest in a startup or okay. um, I, I don't know, thinking of new ideas together, launching your own venture. There's, there's so many things where you have the network. And I think that Wharton and, and a lot of other business schools as well have this very, very strong network component that mm -hmm. really makes the experience very valuable, um, whether it's for your career or even out outside of your career, really. Um, and then coming back, I guess, uh, I digressed a bit specifically to Wharton. It's renowned for finance. I, everybody knows this, yeah. right, right? But it also yeah. has stellar offerings and facilities for entrepreneurship and analytics. It has some of uh, the best departments in the world, in fact. In entrepreneurship, okay. there's a facility called the Venture Lab. And mm -hmm. I've been fortunate enough to take part in a bunch of different programming at the Venture Lab, and, and it's been fantastic. Um, there's highly acclaimed faculty across different fields, um, people who've, who've published, people who are uh, great in industry, all sorts of people teach at the school. So that's very valuable. And I consider it an honor to learn from my professors. Um, from okay. a non-academic point of view, really like name an extracurricular activity you will find the club for it and you will find your people who have the same interests there's a lot of professional clubs if you're interested in i don't know consulting or private equity mm -hmm. or venture capital or finance or marketing or name it really technology um there's also community and affinity based clubs it's a great way to find people with common interests and even now during the pandemic where everybody is far away from each other I think that all of these channels are just a great avenue to remain connected to the Wharton community. And I think that all of these really make the school special. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Absolutely amazing. So, Gatri, what are your plans after your MBA? Any thoughts on that? Yeah. So, immediately after my MBA, mm -hmm. I want to pursue a career in strategy slash management consulting. And oh, wow. this That's really, awesome. yeah. So this really came again from my past experience at ITC, mm. uh, at, at KPMG, I saw companies from a financial point of view, mm. I wanted to learn more about operations at ITC, mm. I got to see 
more business on the ground, uh, talk to a lot of different people. Um, and I learned that I was really interested in strategy and what makes companies tick. So I think that all of this plus my MBA experience has really uh, sort of very naturally pointed me towards the direction of working in management consulting post my MBA. And I think I'm going to spend some time there, see how it goes, and then decide what I want to do after. Career paths are fluid. Yeah, sounds valid as well. So basically, like just uh, you just uh, mentioned about management consulting. So the top three firms like McKinsey, BCG, Bain, they are there in the management consulting. You know, if you want to get into these kind of firms, what are some of the skills needed in order to get into these firms, according to you? Sure. I want to preface this by saying one thing. Mm. Um, two things, actually. Number one, my experience will be more uh, tailored towards the US uh, than India, but I don't think that should be a problem. These firms are global. They have yeah. similar criteria everywhere. And the second Absolutely. thing I want to say is I actually didn't really know much about these firms until I joined ITC. So okay. it was a very long learning journey. Um, I was pretty relaxed during my CA and took things as they came. Hmm. But um, I think that talking to people and learning more really helped me discover these firms and realize that they aligned with what I wanted to do with my career. So having said that, um, two things that I think that CAs can develop if they want to uh, excel or get their foot in the door, essentially. Number one, CAs are brilliant at granular thinking, mm. very detailed oriented, very technical. But one skill that you want to work on consciously is a more big picture kind of thinking, understand the impact of decisions on companies, economies at large. That's something that sometimes some people struggle with. So you might want to learn how to practice that more consciously. That's number one. Number okay. two is, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard this before, is presence and communication. So mm -hmm. these are all things that some people are naturally gifted with, but most of us really need to put in the hard work to improve our communication skills as well as our presence. And I think that careers like management consulting, where it's very client facing, really mm -hmm. require this, especially when you're interacting with people of such stature, right, in the right. C-suite. So I think that these skills are definitely valued. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot for that. So I think more or less we have covered almost all the aspects, your pre-MBA preparations, your MBA experience, your ITC experience. So it was a very insightful discussion and conversation with you as well. Any last message which you'd like to give to all the viewers who are watching the video? Yeah, sure. I am guessing that a lot of our viewers are young and are still yeah. figuring out how to clear their CA exams and what yeah. to do afterwards. Well, I guess um, I can't help you with clearing your CA exams. You've really got to do that yourself. <laughs> but yeah. I do have two things that I think would help. One tactical and one around mindset. So from a more tactical point of view, I want to emphasize the importance of networking. So talk to people in fields that you're targeting, ask them about your experiences. People are generally very helpful if only you right. reach out and ask. And technology is fabulous these days. Leverage tech and, and tools like LinkedIn and keep up with the latest in business. Talk, listen, learn, absorb from your environment network. So that's a tactical piece of advice. And more from a mindset point of view, dream big. Don't allow yourself to be constrained by your qualification or your mm. upbringing or your financial position or your professional experience, nothing. Allow yourself to dream, set big goals and really work hard to achieve them. And if you look around you, there's people who are always willing to help you achieve your goals. So definitely take advantage, make use of that and dream big. Right, that was very inspiring and motivating as well. Thanks for such wonderful pieces of advice. So thanks a lot, Gayatri, for coming up on the show. It was indeed a very, very nice experience for me as well to have a conversation with you. And personally, I've also benefited a lot because of all the insights which you just gave. So thank you so much for coming up on the show and indeed all the best for your future endeavors. No doubt, like you're going to go way ahead in your future. Thanks a lot, Kushal. It was very nice of you to have me here again. And I'm very glad if I'm able to be even a little bit useful to you or any of our viewers. Again, like I mentioned, I'm really humbled and it was an honor and all the best to everybody, to you, viewers, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so much.